Uh, as of late, here's my impression of Broncos fans on Twitter. Uh, uh, I think Simeon sucks. No, no, I think Paxton sucks. No, Simeon sucks more. No, Paxton sucks more. Fuck you. No, fuck you. You don't know anything about football. Yeah, I've been watching football my whole life, you cocksucker. Simeon sucks. My Paxton Lynch sucks. You suck. Oh, you suck. You fucking suck. Fuck. Fuck you. You suck. Fuck. QB suck. Fucker. Fucking suck. Suck. Ah! Ah! No, my mom disabled my Twitter account. Pretty accurate. Welcome to the season finale of Game of Throws, a QB competition. <laughs> I'm Brandon Perna, and the Broncos quarterback competition is finally over for now. Today, Vance Joseph announced that Trevor Simeon will be the big dick starter for the 2017 season. Simeon Toast Crunch is back. Love him, hate him, or want to make love to him, he's your Denver Broncos quarterback. Some might even go as far as saying he eclipsed Paxton Lynch today. <laughs> I got more shitty jokes where that came from. This episode is sponsored by the greatest ticket purchasing app on earth, SeatGeek. They love me so much, they are giving me money to talk about something I already used. Use my promo code that's good when you download the SeatGeek app with the link in the description to get $20 off your first order. That's good, all one word will save you $20. I like SeatGeek because they rank their ticket prices from 1 to 100, so you know whether or not you're getting ripped off. Also, you can preview your seat before you buy it, which is great if you want to purchase Bronco tickets or any NFL tickets from a stadium where you might not be sure if you have a great view. I hate to do this, but, and this is controversial, I don't think Chad Kelly will ever be an elite NFL QB. He posted this to his Instagram story yesterday. A black screen with a thumbtack sticker? A thumbtack? Talk about arrogance. To think people love you so much you can just post meaningless bullshit like this makes me sick. Fall in line, swag, and start posting 20 workout videos to Instagram like every other athlete or get the fuck out. Swag Kelly, Machine Gun Kelly. No, it's Thumbtack Kelly. Cause you're gonna be Somebody's gonna use you to hold up a poster one day. Now I wanna make it clear where I stand. Will Trevor Simeon be a great NFL QB? No clue. There are too many factors to say anything other than he does have a chance. The odds are not in his favor, but he has an opportunity to beat the odds this season. Is Paxton Lynch a bust? No clue. Could he be great? No clue. Nobody really knows. Neither guy is Andrew Luck. They both have many question marks surrounding their potential. I will say this, try and be patient. The Broncos will probably have four new starters on the offensive line, including the rookie left tackle, Garrett Bowles. The Broncos will have a quarterback running an entirely new offense. That shit is going to take time to develop this season. So if the offense doesn't start off hot, even with Trevor named the starter, don't go crazy. This is what Vance Joseph had to say in his press conference today. Trevor Simeon will be the team's starting quarterback moving forward, and I predict he will win at least three Big Dick Player Awards this season from the hit YouTube channel That's Good Sports. Wow, thanks Vance. He also said Trevor gets no credit for having a great arm, but he has great arm talent. I, I agree, just look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd let that arm give me a 50 yard reach around. Get it? I'm implying I have a 50 yard giant dong. And that I'd be willing to let, a, let another man touch me in the weenus area. Vance did say that the thing that separated Simeon from Lynch was his confidence. And that Simeon reminded him of the rock in Ballers. You're gonna go back in there and you're gonna get your fuck on. Let's do this. Vance simply wanted someone who was ready to get his fuck on in 2017. Okay, so you're either happy Simeon is starting or you're bummed Paxton isn't. It's okay, we're all rooting for the same team here. Literally, we are all rooting for the same team to succeed. So stop fighting with each other about which guy will be more average. 
<laughs> I will say this, I have a lot of respect for John Elway in allowing this decision to happen. He could have easily forced Vance Joseph to play his guy, Paxton Lynch, uh, but even John Elway knows Simeon looks better right now, and Vance Joseph said it was a group decision. As a fan, I'm going to remain optimistic. I've said it a hundred times on this channel. We don't know what the ceiling, ceiling is for either of these QBs. I also don't think that a little over a half game of preseason football for each guy is really enough time to make a full evaluation. I mean, imagine if your future for work this year was determined by a two hour evaluation from your 40 hour work week. Would it be those two solid hours you actually work during the day or any combination of the six hours you're killing time on the internet instead of doing your goddamn job? If we were getting evaluated like Paxton Lynch and Trevor Simeon, most of us would have already been fired. Except for me because I don't have a real job. Now in defense of Paxton Lynch, I don't think it's fair at all to call him a bust yet. And I agree the only way he's going to get better is by playing. However, I think it's clear right now Trevor Simeon is ready to go. And he gives the team the best chance to win right now, especially against a brutal schedule early in the season. If you watched Saturday's game against the 49ers and didn't think Simeon looked much more prepared to play at the quarterback position in the NFL, you're probably more of a soccer guy. Or you drank so much that your brain can't accurately recall the game. The thing I'm most sick of hearing is that people who think Simeon has a chance to be a decent QB are delusional assholes just making excuses for him since he didn't have a Pro Bowl season as a first year starter. If I were to say the offensive line was bad last year, Simeon played with a pretty significant shoulder injury and had almost no running game to help him, then I'm just making up excuses for him or I'm actually taking the time to evaluate the obstacles he faced last season and how insanely difficult that must have been for a first year starting quarterback. You have to be lucky to land an elite QB in the NFL, plain and simple. And when you don't have one, you have to hope the guy you have can develop into a pretty good quarterback. It's easy to be blinded by physically gifted QBs, but it's a little trickier to recognize mentally gifted QBs. Simeon might, might be the guy who can win games by being smarter than he is athletic. Might be. And oh yeah, Vance Joseph complimented his goddamn arm, which he gets no credit for. The Broncos were the sixth worst rushing team last year. New England, even with the great passer Tom Brady, were the seventh best rushing team. The Super Bowl loser Falcons, fifth best rushing team. Derek Carr in his breakout season, sixth best best rushing team behind one of the best lines in football. The Dallas Cowboys second best rushing team with arguably the best line in all of football. Those are not excuses. Those are football observations that prove a run game helps your offense tremendously regardless of the NFL experience a QB has. Look, if the rushing attack is better, if the offensive line isn't one of the worst in the NFL this season, you will see Simeon play much better this year. I'd bet an inch of my penis on that, which is about half. And if those things improve greatly and Simeon stagnates, then you can say, well, we can now move on to Paxton Lynch. If you throw Paxton out there with another bad line and shitty rushing attack, he's going to crash and burn too. I do think the line and run game will be better, but if you're sold on the idea that Simeon isn't any good, then let him prove it to you. So there are no questions when Lynch goes in. But if Simeon goes out there and plays well, then be a good Broncos fan and get excited for him. It's Simeon Toast Crunch time. Put it in a bowl, pour some milk on it, shove it down your throat, shut up and eat it. Sure, does it contain too much sugar? But give it a chance, it's delicious. Paxton Lynch struggled to learn Gary Kubiak's offense last year, and he's struggling to learn Mike McCoy's. That doesn't mean he won't eventually pick it up, but it does mean Trevor has been able to learn it more quickly. You have to give credit to the guy who can immediately absorb a new offense and apply it on the field. The Broncos have nothing to lose except football games by starting Simeon. If Paxton Lynch would have been named the starter, then John Elway would basically have to tell Vance Joseph, Mike McCoy, and Bill Musgrave, hey, your jobs are safe no matter what happens this season with Paxton Lynch. 
John Elway would have to explain to the team they are going with the guy they need to develop, even if it costs them their playoff hopes. You can't do that with the team who has an elite defense at the beginning of the season. You have to let it fall apart naturally halfway through, like the Showtime series Dexter. Elway would basically have to say the opposite of what he said every season since taking over as GM. That top hand's got to give the center plenty of pressure so he knows where he has to snap that ball. Elway would have to be certain that sacrificing wins this year is worth the long-term investment in Lynch. And to be brutally honest, Lynch hasn't shown that yet, and he hasn't shown it with two entirely different coaching staffs. So maybe Gary Kubiak wasn't crazy for going with Trevor Simeon. Maybe, just maybe, with his lifetime of coaching experience and football playing experience, he played the better QB last year. But here's the problem, and I got roasted on Twitter for saying this last week. Despite being drafted in the first round, I don't believe Paxton Lynch was ever truly a first round QB prospect. Yes, I'm using hindsight. What the fuck else would I use to evaluate something that happened in the past? I'm also not saying Paxton wasn't projected to go late in the first round. What I am saying, what is the goddamn truth, is that a QB that truly needs multiple years to develop before he starts in the NFL should not be taken in the first round unless an organization has the luxury to wait. You have to select players in the first round who can come in and make an immediate impact on your team. The only two QBs who probably should have been taken in the first round last year were Carson Wentz and Dak Prescott. Dak and Paxton have almost identical stats in their final two collegiate seasons. The main difference is Dak played in the SEC instead of the AAC, so he probably played against much better competition. And if the Bronco scouts did a better job evaluating Dak's college passing playbook, they would have realized it's similar to some NFL passing playbooks. That's coming directly from Dak Prescott's mouth about his success in year one in the NFL. There were many of you who also said, LA sucked his first rookie year, but they stuck it out with him. You can also do it with your eyes as a quarterback. Yeah, I know, so did Peyton Manning, but John Elway and Peyton Manning coming out of college were near consensus number one overall draft picks. They were Heisman runner-ups. They were highly recruited QBs coming out of high school with the spotlight on them at Stanford and Tennessee their entire college career. That's not who Lynch was in college. Comparing him to John Elway is like comparing Daenerys Targaryen to Cersei Lannister. Sure, they both are sexually attracted to family members, but they're not the same goddamn queen. If Paxton couldn't win the starting job by year two, he was drafted way too high. That's a fact. Doesn't mean he's a bust. It just means he needs too much time to develop to spend that kind of draft capital on. Now, if Paxton becomes a Pro Bowl QB here in Denver, starts for 10 years, then I will say I'm wrong. I will admit when I am wrong, unlike all these goddamn egomaniac Twitter fucking football experts. If you like logical football talk, please support this channel on Patreon with a monthly donation. My goal is to have this channel be 100% fan funded so we can continue to do and say whatever the hell we want here. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. If you're already subbed, click the little bell button next to the subscribe button so you get notifications when I upload. I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna, and that's where we can really talk about football.